In class, you've been learning about graphing polynomial functions. So we're going to look at a couple examples here of um, just that. Um, so in our first example, they've given it to us in factored form, um, which means I can right away see my x-intercepts. So my x-intercepts are negative 1, 2, and negative 4. Um, I can also see that it is a cubic fu function. because x times x times x is x cubed. And I can also see that um, it is, um, an, it's negative. So, set up my axes, one, two, three, four, negative one, one, two. Now, when I'm graphing polynomial functions, for now, I'm sort of just sketching them because I'm not sure with the information that's given how high up or how low down the various um, lumps, humps in my function um, go. So I do know that cubic functions come in two shapes, either going up from left to right or going down from left to right. And in this case, because the function has a negative co leading coefficient, it is going to be the one that goes down from left to right. I also know that once it goes down, that it has to do some sort of turn to come back up to negative 1. Um, I can also figure out my um, x my y-intercept by multiplying the constants in each of these parentheses and then negative. So I have negative 1 times 1 times negative 2 times 4, which is going to give me a positive 8. So let's scale this as 2, 4, 6, 8. So I know that my function at least goes crosses the y-axis at 8. And then, of course, it goes through the x-intercept of positive 2. Now, again, um, you know, this function may actually go way up higher before it comes down and passes through x-intercept of 2. It may go way down lower. Um, so, again, this graphing process is, is more of a sketch than, than anything else at this point. Um, example 2. Example 2 is not written in factored form, and so I have to factor it. So when I factor this, I get x squared minus 1 times x squared plus 1. Um, x squared minus 1 can factor to be x plus 1, x minus 1. And x squared plus 1 can be factored using complex numbers. And so it's x minus i, x plus i. So I do know two um, of the of x the x intercepts. I know that my x intercepts are negative one and positive one. Um, I also know my y intercept. My y intercept is going to be negative one. That's the number right here, the constant in the function. Um, I also know that it's quartic, which means it's going to have some sort of u-shaped pointing up or some sort of u-shaped pointing down, with the possibility of one hump in there, of one, three humps, I guess, up, down, up, down. Um, so um, I know that this one is facing up because there's a positive leading coefficient, um, but I'm not really sure how many bumps there should be in there. So at the very least, I can graph this much of the function. I know it's going to go through negative one. I know it's going to go through one and positive one one on the x-axis. And then, you know, I could just look like this. It could look like this. There are many different possible shapes here, um, but the most important piece is that you have it both, the end behavior is pointing up in both directions, that you have the x-intercepts and y-intercept correct, and that you have no more than one, two, three bumps in your function. Okay, example three. Example three is also not written in factored form, so I need to factor it. The first thing I notice here is that all three terms have a four and an x in common. Factor that out. I've got x squared minus two x plus one. I can factor x squared minus two x plus one. That is x minus 1 squared. So I now have an x-intercept of 
0 and positive 1, where that positive 1 is a double root. Um, I have a positive leading coefficient, so and it's a cubic, which means I have this general shape. Um, because this is a double root, I know that it doesn't actually go through the x-axis, but lightly touches it. So, oh, and I also know that my y-intercept is 0, because there is no constant in this function. So I know I go through the point 0, 0. And let's have 1 be out here, just so that we get a slightly different... Um, one, two, three, four, so we can see the picture a little bit bigger. So I know it's going up from here. I know it has to hit here. But because this is a double root, I also know that it doesn't go through the x-axis, but lightly touches it and bounces back up. My last example is of another um, cubic function. Um, this function is kind of interesting because it's not factored, but it actually is factorable. Um, it turns out that this pattern can be factored as x minus 3 times x squared plus 3x plus 9. And we can double check that. Let's, let's, double, let's take the time to double check it so that we're absolutely sure. So I have x cubed plus 3x squared plus 9x minus 3x squared minus 9x minus 27. And there it is right there, my 3x squared and my 9x cancel, so I'm left with not x cubed minus 27. So I now have this lovely, fa this lovely factored form, and I want to be able to factor this part also. The problem is, is it's not factorable. So I'm going to have to use the quadratic function. I could complete the square here, which is generally my favorite method, but because the b is um, an odd number, it makes it a little more complicated. So I'm just going to go straight for the quadratic. So I have x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. And I simplify that, so I get negative 3 plus or minus the square root of 9 minus 36 which is negative 27 all over 2. I can simplify this square root to be 3i square root of 3 all over 2. So now I know I have um, three x-intercepts. Oh, is this one really an x-intercept? I actually have three roots. So I have that original one up here of 3, and then I have negative 3 plus 3i root 3 over 2, and negative 3 minus 3i root 3 over 2. And I want to point out something really important here, which is that whenever I have an i as my root, I have two of them, and they're always complex conjugates. which means they are always the same except for the sign in front of the, com of the imaginary portion of the answer. And we can actually see that that exact same thing happened um, down here when I factored the x squared plus 1 as x minus i and x plus i. I again have two roots there, positive i and negative i, 0 plus i. 0 minus i. So again, complex conjugates. So now I look at this and I have one root. I know I have negative 3. I know I have a y-intercept of negative 27. So it's a little longer. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Let's scale this by 3s and then 1, 2, Three. Now I know I have to go through negative 27, and I know I have to go through 3. And now I don't go through the x-axis any other times. That's what these complex roots tell me. I only, touch, I only go through the x-axis once. Um, so I also know that my leading coefficient is positive, so my general shape is going to be going up from left to right. So up 
from left to right. And I know it's curvy, but I don't know where the curves are. So again, I could have something that looks like this. The most important piece here is that I have my x-intercept, my y-intercept, and my end behavior going in the proper directions.